Alrighty guys, welcome back to Fog Wrestling and it is time for your WWE Smackdown review for the 13th of January 2023. 13th, unlucky for some, unlucky for me, because I unfortunately had to sit and watch this. The show, it wasn't awfully bad, but there was just not a lot good about it. Now, before the show started in the preview, I spoke about a couple of things. One of those things was Ronda Rousey showing up tonight and making some sort of announcement. Turns out that Ronda Rousey did not turn up tonight. Why she turned up or why she didn't turn up, I have no idea. Maybe it's because Smackdown was happening in Wisconsin tonight and they have a horrible football team. There, there you go, there's me with my NFL joke to see if that gets me any heel heat, but I doubt it. Anyway, moving on. I can, I can hear a pin drop, but yeah, moving on. I don't know why Ronda Rousey didn't turn up tonight, so did, did I really care? Not really. Maybe she's too busy on Twitch streaming games or complaining about how the world title doesn't mean anything and she wants to challenge for the tag team titles. Maybe that's what she was doing, but honestly, Smackdown with or without Ronda Rousey doesn't make a big difference to me. We kick off with the WWE Intercontinental title match. Braun Strowman versus Gunther. Uh, Gunther, pretty much the entire match, worked the arm. It wasn't a bad match, but it was boring. I just, I just don't like Braun Strowman. I don't like Gunther. Uh, uh, although the only thing I will give them credit for, at least it's two big men. But you, I look at Gunther, he is just as bland. He's a big man, but there's like nothing impactful about this guy. There's like nothing. I don't, there's no intensity. He's just a, a guy that. A flabby guy, out of shape guy that plods around the ring with a boring style. The ring is a secret, a secret of wrestling in my ring. I mean, what? He probably wants Braun Strowman to go up his ring and do some sacred stuff. But anyway, enough of that. Braun Strowman probably would, to be honest. But the match just wasn't that great. I mean, it was okay, but... You know, it's not going to get me to rate the show 10 out of 10 or anything like that. It was pretty boring. He worked on the arm, kept working on the arm. The finish was pretty sloppy. He tried to do a powerbomb off the top rope and Braun Strowman almost landed on his feet before, you know, landed on his back. It was a bit weird. Uh, Imperium did come out and get involved, but they didn't really have that much of an impact. Honestly, I would call this a clean win for Gunther. You could argue maybe he got a bit lucky, but... Just because it's Braun Strowman, he shouldn't have went to top rope anyway. So yeah, no, I'd say this is about pretty much about clean as you'd expect them to go. I didn't expect Gunther just to annihilate Braun Strowman one, two, three, clean as can be. The kind, the way they did it, it was kind of like Gunther got the assist from the the turnbuckles because he was able to power bomb uh, Strowman off the top rope or whatever, but. Yeah, Gunther retains. Um, a little, not surprised. I thought Strowman had a chance tonight, though. I wouldn't have been shocked if the belt changed hands, but it didn't. So, yeah, man, it was, it is what it is. We, we move on. After that, we got, I'll tell you what we got. We got the same old rubbish, the same old crap that we get every single SmackDown. I know a Bray Wyatt promo where he comes out and he explains to us who he is. I'm Bray Wyatt. I am Howdy, Uncle Howdy. I'm the eater of worlds. No, I'll tell you what you are, Bray. You are an overrated bastard. That's what you are. You suck. Your return has sucked. All Triple H fanboys are going to pretend that his return is the greatest thing ever and that this booking and this story is the greatest thing ever. Literally nothing's happened. Bray Wyatt's been back about three months and he's attacked the cameraman and spoke at the same riddles every single week. Nothing's happening here. Honestly, this feud sucks and I, I really hope LA Knight wins and moves on to bigger and better things. I know he's not. I mean, I, I know LA Knight is just not going to get that big push that he deserves in WWE, but LA Knight for me is way better than, than Bray Wyatt. Honestly, I, I just don't get what people like behind Bray Wyatt. I don't, I don't get it. I, I mean, I'm not saying that the guy doesn't have... I'm not saying he's not a good talent or whatever, but this character at the moment, the way they're going about it, Give me The Fiend any day of the week. I, I, thought, I thought The Fiend was way better than this, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I, I'm just not really enjoying this. Uh, Sammy Sane turns up at the Bloodlines locker room. He wants to go inside. Heyman says, what are you going in there for? He says, I want to speak to the guys. Heyman says, there is no guys. I'm the only guy tonight. Sammy seems a bit upset 
that no one is turned up to like support him tonight with his match with Kevin Owens. But uh, Heyman says that the tribal chief thought that Sammy could do it by himself tonight and that he wanted their faith in Sammy saying and that he believes in Sammy saying and that he's going to give Sami Zayn the opportunity to defeat Kevin Owens on his own. Sami Zayn at first seems a little bit upset, but then he then he says, yeah, I know what, tell Roman, call him, text him, tell Roman I will handle this. And Sami Zayn then, I guess, walks off to get ready for his match. Then Rey Mysterio comes out. He says that holidays are normally a special time. He says he's been on the road for years, and at holidays you get to cherish your family, especially at Christmas. But he says he didn't have a good Christmas because of his son Dominic. Ray says his son is walking around like some sort of thug, and as a father, it breaks his heart. But as a man, he's pretty fed up. He's done with Dominic's bullshit. And this was a pretty good promo from Ray. But then, of course, Karrion Cross comes out. <laughs> And just bores us, man. I, I don't like Karrion Cross. I like Scarlet. I like looking at Scarlet, but I mean, she doesn't seem to reveal much these days. She comes out and dressed in like gowns and like, like she's all covered up. I mean, what the hell? Can we get the smoke show? We need the smoke show. Got Scarlet Bordeaux, not just Karrion Cross as lackey. And of course, uh, Cross says Ray's a bad father. It's not the first time we've heard this stuff. Ray's a bad father, I'm pretty sure. Didn't The Miz say this stuff to Ray? I mean, uh, this has happened before. And I don't mean Eddie Guerrero and Ray. I'm, I'm pretty sure this has been done before. Uh, with, with Ray Mysterio in like, the past two. I think it was The Miz. I'm pretty sure it was The Miz. But anyway, sounded familiar. Karrion Cross says that... Um, is Ray disappointed that Dominic never grew up to be like him, or is he disappointed that he never, you know, raised Dominic to be like him? I mean, whatever. They start brawling. And of course, Dominic Cross gets the upper hand because Scarlet distracts Ray. She pulls his leg when he's going for the 619. I am just so done with women getting involved in WWE and the men just absolutely being treated like idiots and falling for it. Like, Rey Mysterio surely should know that Scarlett's on the outside. I, <laughs> there's no point ranting about it because I do it every video, but it really does bug me. Like, it, it really, really bugs me. The, the, the men are, are just treated like absolute imbeciles when there's women around. It's like the, the IQ goes out the window. Their, their like physical abilities go out the window. It's like they're unable to think. They're unable to defend themselves. It's like... Uh, <laughs> it's like wrestling for dummies, honestly, man. Um, but yeah, Karen Cross puts them in a chokehold, whatever. Then Liv Morgan's backstage, she says that she's going to enter number one, she's going to win it. Uh, Emma says that that's not really a good idea. We've got Maxine Dupree backstage looking so fucking hot. And you, you look at Maxine Dupree and she really would remind you of like a diva from like, you know, the, the 2000s. She really would remind you of like a diva from that era. You just look at Maxine Dupree, then you look at the other women here and it's like... I like I'm not call I'm not calling Liv Morgan or Emma ugly, but I mean you look at Maxine Dupree and she legit looks like a model, whereas Liv Morgan and Emma, yeah, yeah they're all right. I mean I'm not they're, they're hot. I'm not denying that, but there's a difference between being hot and then being like a, a, a fuck goddess level, and you know that's what Maxine Dupree looks like. And then Raquel comes in. Big muscular woman. Liv Morgan slaps her. Raquel doesn't slap her back. And I'm not sure if that's because Raquel looks like a man and men aren't allowed to hit women in WWE. But, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of people there that like these big muscular women. Honestly, I don't find it attractive. But it's weird that a lot of guys do. And I, I was looking at this segment and Raquel was, like, looking down at Liv. And then I was looking at Raquel's upper body and it's like her shoulders are huge. She's got like loads of muscles like popping out of her arms. And honestly, man, her breasts are tiny. I, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if this wasn't a chick. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't a biological woman, man, because she just looks like a man. Physically, she looks like a man. And uh, yeah, it, I don't <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't bet money on it, man. Honestly, I, I don't see the attraction towards the, the likes of people like Raquel and Rhea Ripley, but yeah, man, it is what it is. You guys do you. Uh, Shia Lee takes on Tegan Knox. 
what is the point of either of these two existence? I, I don't know. Shia Lee, one week she's a heel, next minute she's a face. Tegan Knox came back. Didn't Tegan Knox lose to Shia Lee in the like this? This is dumb. I mean, I'm pretty sure in the gauntlet match like two weeks ago. Or was it last week? I can't remember. It's not important. It doesn't really matter. But I'm pretty sure Shia Lee, in the space of three minutes, beat both Tegan Knox and Emma. But tonight, on her own against Tegan Knox, she loses. And it's like, it's 50 50 book. I mean, how can anyone get over it? Listen, you don't need to be, you don't need to have like a 1000 IQ to figure this out, right? 50 50 book and fucking sucks. If, if you beat somebody, then they beat you the week after. Nobody's getting over. The win cancels each other out. The person that won first, all of a sudden, like their win was almost deemed a fluke because when they, they faced them for a second time, they couldn't get the job done. And then the person that wins the second time, it's like, well, all right, who, who cares if you won the second time because you lost the first time? You know, 50 50 booking is retarded. It, it's not a good idea. No, who got, oh, name me one person, one person that got over and achieved huge success in wrestling by getting 50 50 booking. You look at Hogan or Austin Cena. Those guys never lost. Those guys, if you look at their like win percentages, man, in their primes, it was probably like 95%, honestly. There wasn't 50-50. I guarantee you that. Nobody gets over with this 50-50 book, and it is dumb. It is so bloody dumb. I, don't, I just do not get it. You cannot get over losing all the time. And when these people just trade wins, it's like... What's the point? Like seriously, what is the point? There, there is no point. It, it was, it made no sense for Shia Lee to win the night, but she did. So, whatever. I mean, she didn't win. She lost. But I mean, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Honestly, who the hell cares? I don't care. Honestly, I do not care whatsoever. Uh, Lib Morgan versus Raquel Rodriguez. Raquel wins. There was multiple times in the match where Raquel went over the top rope and then Lib Morgan went over. Oh, if that happens on in the Royal Rumble, they're going to be a no, 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 no shit, that shit, bloody Michael Cole. No shit, man. We know. We're not stupid. Jesus Christ. Is that supposed to entertain me? Oh, look at that. They went over the Royal Rumble. That's, you know, that's alluding to the fact that if that happens in two weeks on Sunday, they're going to be at the Rumble match. I mean, who cares? I don't care. Nobody cares. Then we see Sonia Deville. She's asking Adam Pearce for a match. She says that she wants a rematch. Adam Pearce says she lost and she can't give her a rematch. Sonia Deville compares her situation to Charlotte's. Uh, Pierce says, yeah, it's kind of true. You both came out and asked for a match, but the difference is Charlotte won her match. You didn't. Sonia then says uh, she bets that Adam Pierce wants her to enter the Royal Rumble and have to earn her way through 29 women just to get back to where against Charlotte Flair, where she's currently already at. And Adam Pierce is like, yeah, of course, why not? And then DeVille says she's going to find a way to make the rematch official. Uh, nice wee pun there from DeVille, and then she walks off. I, I find the film really attractive. I mean, don't know why. Kind of looks like my ex of it and things were. <laughs> she was a bit toxic, like, so I don't know. Maybe I should stop finding the film attractive. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, we come back from the break and it's Charlotte Flair versus Sonia DeFell backstage. They're brawling. And this is weird. It's like Sonia DeFell attacks Charlotte from behind. Charlotte gets the upper hand. Sonia DeFell attacks her from behind again. It's like. I mean, even when Charlotte Flair gets attacked from behind, she still has to come out on top smelling her roses. It's, like, so dumb. And then you've got all these, like, big men security, all these referees, and they just, they just can't pull apart two women. It's, like, what happened to wrestling being believable? I mean, seriously, back in the day, watch it, man. Honestly. If you, like, but I'm, me and my, me and my brother on Fog Wrestling, we're currently doing, like, refu retro reviews, and we're currently watching from the brand split. So, we've been watching from, like, the Attitude Era, but once we got to the brand split, we, we started doing, like, the reviews here on YouTube and all that stuff. And at the moment on Raw, you have a feud with Molly Holly and Trish Stratus. Now, whenever Molly Holly and Trish Stratus... Like, got it. if they got into, like, a backstage brawl, honestly, like, one security guard, maybe not even a security guard, like, one referee would come over, or, like, a coach, Jonathan Coachman, like, an interview, like, a backstage interf male interviewer, they would come over, and if the two of them were brawling, like, one person would grab Molly, and, like, maybe the other person would, like, wrap his arm around Trish Stratus's waist, 
lucky guy, I know. But he would like, literally like wrap his arm around Trish's waist and just pull her away. One one arm, pull her away. And that's realistic because this guy is a lot, he's a lot bigger, a lot heavier. You could do that. But now, in like 2023, we have to pretend that these women are, you know, untouchable and that like 15 men can't separate two women. It's fucking retarded, man. Honestly, I, I, oh, I hate wrestling. I hate wrestling in 2023, man. I hate it. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, we got a Cody Rhodes recovery vignette. Good for him. I know I do like Cody, but I just don't, I don't care about wrestling, man. It sucks. It's, it actually it absolutely sucks, man. It doesn't matter if I like Cody or not. It's going to come back and his whole run is going to be ruined because he wrestles in WWE. It doesn't matter where he wrestles. I said that as if, you know, WWE is the only company that's doing shit. In I mean, WWE is the best of a bad bunch, and that just kind of sums up how bad the bunch is. But anyway, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, main event. Um, decent match. Sami Zayn towards the end looks like he has Kevin Owens won. He's about to hit the Haluda kick. He's going to win. Sami Zayn's going to do it for the bloodline. And then speaking of the bloodline, uh, the Usos come out. Solo Zakoa come out and they attack Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn then loses the match by DQ. Kevin Owens gets the DQ win. And then the Usos and uh, Solo Zakoa just continually to beat the beat up. They beat up Kevin Owens, and then the Solo Squad has a big splash for the table. Sami Zayn doesn't look happy. He reluctantly poses with them, but Sami Zayn looks upset. But they all pose to do We The Ones, and that is how SmackDown goes off the air. So Sami Zayn had Kevin Owens beat. The Bloodline came out and cost him the match, and there's multiple ways they can go with this. Maybe Sami Zayn can take up an issue next week with the Bloodline. He can you know, argue his point, he had Kevin Owens beat, maybe he'll get added to the map, I don't know, but with the way that's ended, it, they, they left it for, it's definitely open here for, for different possibilities, so who knows, we'll see what happens, the main event was alright, but overall, I mean, the show wasn't that good, um, yeah, no, um, just no real good promo, I'll, I'll, go, I'll give it a, well, I don't know what I'm going to give it, I'll give it a 2 out of 10, I'll, I'll give it a 2 out of 10, opening the match was okay, but boring, the main event was okay, everything else wasn't that great, yeah, I, I'm going to be honest, there wasn't a lot great about this show, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10, guys. Actually, I'll give it a 3 out of 10. Maxine Dupree was hot. So, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Don't say I hate women's wrestling. I'm just, I just gave Maxine Dupree some, some credit. I'd give her something else of that, is for sure. But anyway, let's not go there. Let's end it here. Till next time, guys. Peace.